Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our uh, webinar on Get Ready for DAZA. So before we get started, I would like to make sure everyone can hear us and see the slide. So um, if you could please let us know by using this quick poll, that would be great. All right, and it seems everything is working fine. So welcome again. I'm uh, Aurélie Doucet and I work in the marketing team at Atipreneurs and I will be your host and moderator today. Um, this webinar is being recorded and uh, the video recording will be sent to you after the webinar by email. This webinar is going to be one hour and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the question box and um, we'll cover them at the end of the web webinar during the Q&A session. So today I have the pleasure to be joined by uh, two uh, um, experienced uh, uh, professionals in the IT domain, uh, Rick Farnhorst and uh, Lawrence Grinever. So just before we get started, I would like to introduce them uh, to you. Um, so Rick um, is the, uh, our third leader at uh, Xebia for DevOps and also our lead author for uh, the DESA training. DESA training. So Rick has a PhD in software engineering and has more than 10 years of experience. Um, he specializes in um, guiding organizations and individuals in making IT simpler, better, and of higher quality. So Rick is a member of the editorial board of DASA, and he helps define the core foundations of DASA, including the set of DevOps principles DASA lives by and the competence framework that is the basic for professionalizing DevOps knowledge and skills. And uh, Lawrence is also a uh, business uh, operations manager of, at DASA. He's also our um, portfolio manager at Atipreneurs and uh, is now very much involved with the launch of the DevOps Agile Skills Association, DASA, uh, as the business operations manager. All right, so without any further ado, I would like to uh, um, show you what we're going to cover today. Um, so we are aware that some of you may have joined uh, recently as a partner. So I will give you a quick introduction of who is Entrepreneurs and how you can uh, uh, leverage um, DevOps uh, training materials and uh, how it links to other uh, frameworks uh, that uh, we are offering in our portfolio. Then we are always uh, interested in knowing who has uh, joined us uh, in our webinars. So we will um, ask you a few questions to understand who you are and uh, what's your uh, knowledge and experience and your interest in, in, uh, in DevOps. And then Lawrence and Rick will uh, walk you through uh, the, the association, DevOps Agile Skills Association, DASA, uh, why it was created, its mission, and uh, the, the, um, the DevOps model. And, uh, and, um, and, and then Rick will give you, will show you a sneak preview of the course material, how it looks like as uh, it's uh, now released as of today for you to uh, license. Um, uh, so uh, it's a great uh, uh, first uh, uh, yeah, feel of how the material will look like. And then we'll explain you how you can be part of it, how you can start uh, offering the training to your uh, community, to your customers. And uh, we'll have uh, about 15 minutes left to uh, answer your questions. All right, so let's first start by um, uh, understanding who has joined us today. So can you please describe your organization? So are you primarily a training company, a consulting company, or you're offering a mix of uh, training and consulting, or you are um, an independent instructor. All right, so I'm uh, going to close the poll and share the results. All right, so interesting that uh, half of you, 50% of you, are offering a mix of training and consulting services. Um, we have 40% of you who are um, instructors, so it's good that you are here because uh, you'll see that um, uh, we will soon be organizing uh, trainer, trainer sessions where you can uh, also uh, join and um, get yourself ready to deliver this um, uh, fundamentals uh, course that's been released today. Uh, and then we also have 21% uh, of you offering uh, only training and 14% uh, consulting. All right, good mix. Um, next question, we'd like to know uh, 
who you are within your organization. So are you primarily a, a sales representative or are you a marketer? Are you a trainer? Are you in the management or a consultant? Then it will help, uh, it will help sorry, Rick and Lawrence to, to target their message uh, depending on uh, uh, your role. And, um, and this is a go-to-market uh, webinar. So it's really hands-on uh, information on, on how the course will look like and how you can leverage this uh, new portfolio to your market. All right. So um, I'm closing now and sharing. All right, so most of you are uh, representing management, so uh, that's very good. So you're probably looking at adding DevOps into, into your, uh, your offering. 44% um, of you are consultants and 50% uh, trainers. We also have some marketers with us, so uh, it's good for uh, your messaging when you are, are uh, going to uh, promote it. And uh, we have some also sales uh, represented here in this webinar. Very good. All right, so just before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Maybe you are new and then you would like to know how you can uh, benefit from our services. So what we do is um, we act as a one-stop shop. We help you accelerate your business so you can license training uh, content from us and uh, deliver it to your uh, customers. And uh, here are the different frameworks that you can uh, uh, leverage from us that are connected to to DevOps. So as you can see, DevOps is very much related and, and uh, has synergies with uh, different uh, other frameworks like Scrum, Lean, and Agile. And uh, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, in today, today's world of, the, in the digital world, sorry, now, uh, a lot of frameworks are interconnecting. So here we are trying to show how you can leverage one and another and then see and then show the synergies that uh, uh, that they have, and then it will help you offer it to your customers, whether they are already offering some uh, best practices frameworks like ITO. So it will help you uh, make the connections. But uh, Rick will give you more information on, on that uh, later in the, in the webinar. Uh, so, and then, so what we do is uh, we, we help you uh, reduce costs uh, on, uh, on deliver development and maintenance so we give you uh, we yeah we give you the chance to offer ready to use content uh, uh, so you can deliver your training without any uh, cost for uh, developing and maintaining your, your, your training and um, and then uh, we have a team of uh, customer solutions team who are ready to help you 24/7 uh, to uh, to help you deliver your course uh, uh, so it's uh, it's uh, in the most convenient way all right, so uh, now we'd like to understand what's your experience in, uh, in DevOps. So first question around it is, uh, what's your experience with DevOps? Are you a, a DevOps guru or, a, um, or may, maybe more an Agile Scrum expert, or you have experience in both DevOps and Agile? Um, or you want to know a bit uh, about uh, DevOps, or you know more about DevOps and you want to know more about uh, the whole uh, DASA uh, uh, training portfolio, or you have no experience with DevOps or Agile, but you are interested in knowing uh, what we have to offer. All right, so I'll close and share. So um, it's good that 53% of you uh, know a bit of both, but uh, or know a bit about DevOps, but want to know more. So that's good because it's indeed the, the purpose of this webinar. And uh, we see that uh, uh, yeah, all of you have interest in, uh, in knowing more. So uh, always good to know. Um, I do have a last question before I will let uh, Lauren start with Daza. So what's your interest in DevOps? Um, so you are responsible for mm -hmm. DevOps in your company, or you're interested in understanding how you can benefit from the Daza training, or you are interested in learning more about Daza, or you're just curious to, uh, uh, to know uh, what's in the courseware and then what's the, the the DASA um, competency framework. All right, just close and share. Good. So, um, 
it's good that 50% of you are interested about to know how you can benefit from DAZA and that's very good. So uh, that will be covered uh, uh, later on. Uh, so you'll see how you can become a training or a courseware partner of, for, uh, of DAZA and then uh, what it involves. Okay, very good. So uh, I'm now going to um, uh, get started and then I'm going to let Lawrence now uh, explain you why uh, DASA was created and what's uh, the mission of the association. Well, thanks, Orly. Um, thanks, and it's great to see. Oh, by the way, good afternoon, everybody, and good morning on the other side of the world, I suppose. Here it's a bright afternoon here in the Netherlands. Um, it's great to see that nobody actually answered uh, that they are DevOps guru just now. It's kind of a trick question, I think, because we don't actually know what that means. And that's the whole reason um, why we're talking about this today. So let me just quickly uh, take a step back and introduce you to the original concept of starting an association around agile DevOps skills. Because yeah, the industry has already decided that DevOps will have a bright future. Looking at the amount of DevOps related jobs expected in a few years from now, and even if you go on LinkedIn right now, you'll see a lot of job offerings, job inquiries getting in many people's inbox for DevOps engineers or uh, however they call it. But uh, yeah, what really is a DevOps engineer we were asking? And I remember being at DevOps Days Anniversary Conference in uh, Brussels a couple of years back. There was a, the anniversary was a big time event. I think it was more than 500 people. And they organize open spaces where you can actually bring in your own topic. And, uh, and then you can hope that people will join and help you think about that topic or resolve it. And, um, and I dotted down training. And maybe 100 people dotted down subjects and topics. So I figured maybe a couple of people will help me join and see if we can get this to work. So we ended up two hours later in a session with more than 50 people probably. Uh, coming at us from all different angles saying, hey, how can we, you know, get some kind of basic training and uh, questions, do we need a certification path? And, and and how can we scale, you know, DevOps teams with our, within our organization? I don't even know what DevOps is. So, so it was clearly uh, a big demand. So I think this was really the, 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 the idea to start the collaborative movement, which we call DASA right now. And I very much like the fact that DASA values the open participation and, and we keep that. And it's, it's one of the main points, which I will talk later about, and the community approach to, uh, to build a common framework of reference when we speak about DevOps. Because while DevOps you know, combines a number of best practices we have gained from the Agile and Lean movement, we should not use it as a golden hammer right now. I think we should try to define together with the community what DevOps is and what not. So enter DASA. So what is DASA? You may have heard already, maybe you have even participated in the launch uh, a couple of weeks back, the official launch um, that, you know, DASA is an independent and an open association um, supporting the development uh, of high performance IT organizations. So really we're trying to help organizations build better teams um, better professionals that can do their job better with the right competencies around DevOps, whatever that means, however we define that together collectively. So what DASA produces is content, obviously, so a competency framework, a maturity model, perhaps even an assessment model later on, a, quali a qualification program, um, and all of these things we'll talk about more later. But uh, Great to know that we're not doing this alone. So even before the launch, we had quite a few Forerunner members already participating uh, in DASA. Um, so basically backing up the whole movement, saying, hey, this is a great idea. You see some of the bigger names, some of the local training and consulting providers, some vendors you see here. And after the launch, I think we even have uh, 40 somewhat more inquiries already now before we actually really get started. So it's great to see that so many parties are saying, hey, this is a good idea, I want to join, I want to participate, even without knowing exactly what it's gonna be. What is the mission of DASA? DASA, uh, like I said, is an open global initiative. Uh, so the open participation part is really, really something special and important. And maybe you can compare it with something you know um, in the open source world, let's say in the Training and certification market, we see the open group, which has forums to develop the standard for TOGA, for instance. And this is something we also 
uh, would like to uh, set up in a similar way. So we would like to invite anybody um, to participate in working groups to develop, to help us think and develop and define standards, frameworks, uh, syllabi, um, assessment models even. So this is really one of the key parts of DASA. Uh, the other part is that it's extendable. So we don't want to say this is it. We're only the, we're going to be the only one. No, we're saying there's great content out there already in the market. There's been uh, a lot of uh, trainings delivered. There's a lot of people with great ideas. So let's build on top of that. But let's see how we can make a bigger picture out of that rather than saying, hey, you have a certification for this or you have done a workshop around that or you've attended a conference. No, let's see how that all adds up. And then lastly, we would like to share the quality of training delivery because uh, I, we think that's really important uh, to get at least a baseline quality uh, for training providers to adhere to so that the end customers will always know what they're getting, of course. So these are the three main points. If you look at the core activities, like I said, we develop um, uh, quite a bit of content. Uh, I mean, we've just recently started. The DevOps Fundamentals course has been launched only this week, uh, Monday, officially. Um, but we're also working on a competency model. We're working uh, on, uh, like I said, maybe an assessment model. So there are many, many assets, if you will, that can be developed uh, by working groups, which is a core activity. Of course, we want to generate more interest for the need for skill development around DevOps. So what does it mean and, and what what do those skills mean? You know, what kind of skills do people need and what kind of behavioral attitude, uh, things like that are important. So so that's the main thing of DAS and that we will do that in the form of, of awareness uh, assets such as um, white papers or speaking conventions at conferences. Um, like I said, we would like to map existing training content in the market to uh, to each other and to the DASA qualification framework. And um, like I said, the last thing, <laughs> I'm repeating myself, we would like to at least advance the quality of training delivery and uh, build a baseline quality for that. So if you look at this map, uh, which we drew, uh, just to give you an impression of where we are, um, we think that a lot of the existing training content, uh, which I just talked about, is around certification brands, is about technology, applying technology for configuration management or cloud computing uh, or autom automation, uh, which is already there, which is talking about DevOps, which has the tag DevOps, but um, which really is topical sometimes or related to a brand or a technology. and. Um, and it's also sometimes proprietary. And if you look at our approach, we would like to um, to have an open um, open movement so everybody can participate. So we build everything together. Plus, we focus heavily on the cultural and the good practice part. So not really the technical. It's not doesn't mean we don't focus on technical stuff, but we don't uh, we stay remain um, vendor neutral in that sense. So you can think of us of as a layer. Uh, the lowest layer would be um, applied certification courses or applied workshops for certain technology. Um, a lot of those are out there already, which are great, I think. Um, but if you look at the you know, average resume of a DevOps professional or whatever you call that, they will have a lot of these things. But what does it really mean? And then there is the second level, which is the experience level. So you, you can go to uh, hackathons, you can go to DevOps days, to conferences, work together, maybe online, do stuff like that. But what's the value of that? There's no certification attached to that. It's just a part on your resume. And we would like to do uh, at, at DASA is look at the competency level and build a framework which basically combines the two other levels. So it's kind of a layer on top of it saying, hey, listen, you have some experience here, you've done this and this and this, and you have some skills, you have some knowledge, proven knowledge, you've taken some courses, you have some certifications, and then uh, that means that you can call yourself this or that. So that's really an analogy to make it simple. What do we do? But if we want to go more in depth, uh, I would like to give the floor to uh, Rick, who is uh, one of the lead authors of the DevOps Fundamentals course and also uh, has a heavy stake in developing the competency framework. Um, so by this, I would like to give the floor to you, Rick. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, hi there, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining. I will tell you a bit more on the 
whole competence development part that we have uh, uh, developed so far uh, within DASA. Um, and I will start by showing you a little bit how we did this uh, over the past few months, together with uh, the, the core team of trainers that has been working primarily on the DevOps Fundamentals uh, course, which is one of which is the first training under the DASA flag. Uh, what you what we see is that DevOps is is hugely popular, and it's at the same time just starting. I would say because uh, from a from a very popular movement originating from the development and operations corner, we see now that many organizations understand that it is a, a, a very important way of building cultures for high performance IT organizations. And that is really needed for those organizations because they see, and often we call this digital disruption or digital transformation, is uh, requiring those more traditional corporates to reinvent the wheel uh, or, or basically reinvent themselves I mean to fight against the startups uh, the Silicon Valley companies the tech companies that basically disrupt each industry uh, and DevOps lends itself quite well if you look at the core ideas behind it but it's not new so there's a lot of knowledge around and best practices uh, uh, to to build uh, on top of so we are really standing on the shoulder of giants and that's what we did also when coming to a competence framework and, and to training materials. You see here at the left how we literally printed out many slide decks with great ideas from other authors and, uh, and experts in the field. Uh, several books, uh, the, if you, for people who are very keen on the topic, they will see, they will recognize the continuous delivery book of by Dave Farley and Jess Humble, for example, and the Lean Startup book on top of it. Those are crucial uh, elements of uh, of what we think should DevOps be. Well, based on all those uh, sources, we created the course outline for the fundamentals training and also arrived at the competency framework for DASA because we really want to mature the field like Lawrence already illustrated together with the community uh, and, and make sure that it's not a golden hammer or just a, a nice new uh, fad, so to say, uh, uh, a holistic uh, but empty hollow phrase that everybody puts as an adjective to to some IT discipline. Now DevOps should stand for much more than that. Uh, the name might be poorly chosen but it represents something that is really important uh, like I said to build uh, high performance cultures. Well at the moment we have uh, like uh, Aurelie uh, mentioned a syllabus uh, and, and the course released this week for the DevOps fundamentals so that's a nice first asset in our uh, portfolio. I'm quite confident that with your help and the whole community, we are uh, growing this, this body of knowledge and uh, getting more traction together. What we arrived at during this process of thinking of, of DevOps and how it should mature the discipline um, was a set of principles that we think is crucial to uh, building those, those high performing IT organizations. Because DevOps is really not a thing, it's not a product or a standard or a framework and definitely not a job title. It's really about experiences, culture and ideas. Uh, and if people live by those ideas and principles then there's a much better chance that you will uh, create a much more versatile and dynamic organizations. Well to quickly go through the principles, um, they're also explained in, in a white paper that has been published and in follow-up webinars we'll go into more details. Um, but you see here a few elements that we borrow from the Lean and the Agile community, all contributing to uh, high-performance IT organizations. And the first one really focuses on uh, customer centricity. Because if you want to survive as a company nowadays, you do need to understand your customers, their wishes, uh, and you should treat yourself as a, as a Lean startup to actually build minimal viable products and dare to pivot your strategy if, if what you're creating or building is simply not uh, appreciated that much or liked. The customer delight part is, is crucial there. Um, but this means that a, a total different way of organizing yourself is, uh, is warranted because many firms have, especially in IT, uh, have all kinds of silos created where people have not that many direct customer contact or feedback loops anymore. And we need to uh, eliminate this waste and get to the to the customers much earlier and faster. So this is the first principle. Uh, and that also means uh, that you should think about the end products that you're trying to create, the services that you want to deliver to your customers. That is the second principle. 
product company thinking is crucial for, for DevOps. Uh, engineering mindset contributes to this because people are working, uh, are, are engineering great products and they should have a mindset for delivering real business value. But organizing yourself as a product company helps instead of focusing in projects uh, and in silos. So these teams that work in as a product team, for example, need to have then end-to-end -end responsibility. That's the third principle. Because otherwise, you still rely too, too much on other teams and expertise that is outside your team. So it's important that you have from the, from the whole end-to-end uh, -end chain, uh, you have expertise on board and you have uh, the responsibility to create real products and services to, uh, to production. But that means, and that's the fourth principle, that the people in your team uh, together need to have all kinds of competencies. And that's much broader than what you see in traditional IT firms at the moment. For example, uh, developers build, uh, build code, uh, nice code or, or less nice code. Other people test this code, yet another team is releasing the software and yet another department, for example, operations, is trying to bring this into production. Well, there are all kinds of overhead and uh, Chinese whispers kind of problems in this whole cumbersome process. In DevOps organizations, you would like to el eliminate this by building cross-functional autonomous teams. But that means that the people uh, in those teams, so the, the IT professionals of the future, so to say, need to be much more T-shaped. So they, have, they need much broader skill sets and, and knowledge on topics to write their own test cases, to do their own business analysis, know enough of the next generation infrastructures to, to put things really into production and not just require a ticket at the operations department and wait a few weeks. Done is life is a typical continuous delivery phrase that applies well to, to understand this point. It is, if it's not life, it's not counting and you have not delivered any value that day. Well, the other two principles, the, the two remaining ones, uh, relate to building a culture where there's a continuous strive for improvement. So people in the teams understand that in further acceleration and improving the quality, it's, it's imperative to eliminate waste and to learn by experimentation. So it's important to, to stimulate teams like this and empower them. Uh, only then you, you have an organization that is continuously ahead of the competition. Uh, and one thing to do this nowadays, and that's where all the IT advancements of the last decade help enormously, is by automation. And you can do this in various parts of the, of the software lifecycle. Um, continuous delivery has a lot of uh, best practices that help you, for, uh, help you to automatically deploy, release and test your software, for example. But also on the provisioning side, the infrastructure side, you see that new kinds of platforms are, can be built easily nowadays. Uh, for example, by putting it in a public or private cloud and using containerization. So all these elements together help creating high performance IT organizations. And this is crucial for not only one of the trainings of DASA, but the whole mindset that we have uh, within DASA for advanced uh, discipline. And that led to this competence framework where we have identified eight knowledge areas and four skill areas that together we think each DevOps team need to be uh, at least uh, competent on, but preferably expert in. That means that uh, not every individual need to be an expert in all those topics, but much more than before, uh, to be an autonomous team that, that can deliver end-to-end -end value to customers, you need to make sure that you not only possess uh, requirements analysis skills, uh, so software architecture skills, but also skills around test spe specification, infrastructure engineering, and the last one in this in the list at the left, of course, important nowadays, security risk and compliance. The, the skill areas uh, mainly represent the, the cultural aspect for, for uh, experimentation, uh, fail fast, uh, learn by doing, and really the team building collaboration part. Some different types of leadership are required for, for creating such a culture, and a and a real mindset for continuous improvement needs to be in place in all levels of the organization to make this work. And as you can imagine, uh, this is quite disruptive for the average IT organization to start working like this. But we see in many uh, bigger corporates nowadays that they're really betting on this and they're really uh, 
going for disruptive uh, reorganizations according to this model, and it's really working. So they've been inspired by, by startups like Spotify and, uh, and other Silicon Valley uh, startups, um, and it seems to work. It's not something you do overnight, but it's really important to, uh, to work in a different way. And for all the IT professionals that would like to uh, uh, take part in this adventure, well, DASA can help at least from the training side to, uh, uh, to help you get there. So we in intentionally uh, design trainings to make sure that everybody could, uh, could join and get a standard frame of reference, a common frame of reference to talk the same language, understand the same principles and the same ambition around uh, a new way of doing IT, basically. Well, I will not go into detail here, but you can read this up later. We will share the slides, of course, on the, the knowledge and skill areas. I already explained a bit. Uh, you see here the five levels in our maturity model that uh, that, that we cover. And it's uh, worth mentioning that um, it's not required to be an expert in any of the related fields prior to, 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 to becoming uh, uh, more advanced in DevOps. Um, especially the foundation level, which is training up until the competent level, number two here, uh, enables you to, uh, uh, to have a not too steep learning curve to, to get into this new way of thinking. Uh, and DASA is not m focusing on the master level, because we think that uh, it would be too pretentious to, to think that through training alone you would reach this level. That is really by experimentation and doing that people can grow further. But levels two to four are the ones that the DASA qualification scheme is focusing on. And we have at the moment uh, these modules listed here um, uh, outlined. Uh, and the, the one at the bottom is already uh, launched as uh, already mentioned earlier. We're working on the second one and later we expect to release a few specialization modules that people can use to grow further in one or more of the directions that, that meet uh, the, the six DevOps principles. And this is not limitative, this is not uh, fixed. Together with the community, we hope that others stand up and uh, help us shape this further and enrich it and extend it with maybe uh, existing materials, but all based on the same, let's say, qualification ambitions and, uh, and competence framework that is the basis of, of DASA. Okay, uh, what I would like to do now is to give you a quick sneak preview uh, through the course materials of the DevOps Fundamentals course. It uh, is uh, really uh, uh, just finished, uh, so it's really one of the first uh, worldwide to, uh, to have a sneak preview, which is always good. Um, as again, like I said, the, that module is a three-day course. Will train up until the second uh, competent lef uh, competence level number two in the model, and on all the knowledge and skill areas. It's worth noting that we don't differentiate here because building those kind of cultures, as I mentioned, only work if everybody is proficient and competent on at least all these areas. No, no differentiation needed yet. And therefore, we have packed the training with quite a lot of interesting content. It's almost too much for free, just three days, but we really hope it in, and think it will inspire professionals to, to after that course, uh, uh, continue on this path and, and help uh, the profession grow with us. So the fundamentals training has this target audience, which is very broad. Uh, these are just examples of, of roles that you'd uh, uh, should should be happy with following this training. It's not limited if this set. Some familiarity with Agile, Scrum, Lean, IT service management is beneficial, but definitely not compulsory. Many of those roles, by the way, those functions will, in my humble opinion, will cease to exist in, in a few years' time, according to the whole DevOps philosophy, because uh, we'll get, get away with most of the silo-based reasoning and the verticalization of many different roles and functions. People will work in multidisciplinary teams and have those roles in these teams to together fix the problems and build great things, but not by separating tasks too much. Uh, release managers, project managers are typical examples of, of functions that you already see uh, diminishing in, in organizations that invest in 
in, in these kind of DevOps transformations. But it doesn't mean that the responsibilities those functions have will, will not be important anymore, of course. In a DevOps culture, you need to, in, in those effective teams, need to incorporate this. Well, what will you learn in the free day uh, DevOps fundamentals course? This is a, a list of learning objectives. Uh, it shows that it's quite broad from, from business case building, uh, business analysis part, the whole history and, and definition of DevOps, the core principles, which I shortly outlined earlier, but also the core concepts from, from infrastructure automation, continuous delivery, lean and agile uh, way of working is included to give a large set of practical ingredients and best practices to, to build your own uh, journey on and to base your own complex development on. That is the whole intent of the fundamentals training. Well, how would this look like in an in a agenda format? You will see here how we have uh, mapped all the topics on the on three days. Um, in the next slide, I will say a little bit more on what is in each of the modules. But you see that uh, after an, a DevOps introduction module, where the core concepts and definitions are shared, uh, there are five uh, specific modules that focus on culture, organization, processes, automation, and measure and improvement. And those perspectives help greatly in uh, giving a comprehensive view on what DevOps is and should be. And it's, uh, it helps greatly to, to, to observe DevOps organizations from much more than tools and technology and much more than just the process mindset, but include also the people aspect, uh, the, the cultural part, um, and also the, the way you organize yourself. So in this three-day course, you will have the certification uh, at the end of the third day as an option. Uh, so we, we bundle this so at the end of the third day you can really certify yourself by uh, passing the exam if you have at least 65% uh, of the multiple choice questions uh, correct. Uh, and you get a, a nice course book which we made including quite a lot of exercises and points for further reading, uh, which is great as a, as a product for, for later use as well. Well, here you see, based on the syllabus, which is available, topics and subtopics for each of the core modules I just mentioned to see a little bit what kind of elements we touch upon. And do note that uh, we will not go in depth on these topics because we really want to provide a broad frame of reference for all people, uh, experienced or not, uh, sp specialist or not, to start working in this kind of new organizations. Um, but it does provide quite a lot of best practices from uh, uh, the state of the art and the state of the practice in, in IT. And that is very helpful. I will not go in detail here, to considering the time. Just uh, maybe a few slides uh, to give you a, a sneak peek in, in how d does the slide where look like. This is a uh, uh, randomly picked set of slides, but it's a little bit at the, 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 the broadness of the of the three-day course, I would say. The, on the left hand, you see here one of the slides that uh, explains uh, why you should invest in DevOps. So this, this should appeal to management and experts who like to start a DevOps journey in their organization. It's not so hard to build a business case, to be honest, but uh, it's good to, to, to understand the multiple angles. There are at least 10 that you could use to, uh, to mobilize people and to get uh, uh, get empowerment. The right side you see, like I already said before, that we are building uh, this on, uh, based on a vast body of knowledge and a lot of expertise already available from many disciplines, especially IT, but not only IT. And you see here a working definition uh, of DevOps as well. So it's great to, uh, when you nowadays build a course that you uh, uh, you have access to so much information and we were, uh, now we're quite proud that we have captured many elements uh, and condensed it in a three-day course format. Then, uh, a little bit more on, on the cultural part. You see here some slides focusing on what are the core elements of a DevOps culture, where, how we should, should you do this? And at the right side, you see an indication of that we do much more than just uh, talking about tools and technology, which is 
if I'm honest, a predominant thing when you read about, about DevOps in the literature and on, online. Uh, there's much less attention, I think, too little attention for, for the organizational, the cultural part, maybe because IT specialists uh, find that a harder thing to, to do or it's a bit out of their comfort zone zone, but it is crucial to, to getting somewhere. So it's, it's about change management, organizational transformation, and effective leadership. Uh, and, and this is a slide about barriers for collaboration. And since collaboration is so crucial to DevOps, it's important to tackle this as well. Then two more slides, I think, to show you a little bit what we're aiming for. This is about the organizational model. I will not go into details, but takeaway here is that you really need to get, a, get away from traditional vertical organizations and you need to build product companies with end-to-end -end responsible autonomous teams. Um, here you see some best practices around continuous delivery, how you can minimize waste and greatly speed up and lower the cost of uh, software delivery by investing in the, in the right ways in your process. At the right side you see a metaphor that we tip typically use to uh, let people understand how you can best treat infrastructure nowadays. Not as unique pets, but better as cattle, which is maybe a harsh metaphor, but if you, if you read it uh, in more detail and think about it, it, it helps understand that uh, it's much more commodity nowadays than you would think. And this, this helps to, uh, to optimize enormously in organizations which, uh, which can still uh, be much more versatile and, and dynamic than they are at the moment. Last one is about uh, feedback and continuous improvement and what kind of measurements and metrics would you use to, to see if you're on the right track and if you did improve already. Uh, in every DevOps transformation and journey, you should think about this ASAP because then it helps to, to focus on, on your progress and to continuously improve based on, on this feedback. So this is a, a sneak preview of the materials. I hope it gave you some context and some ideas on where we stand and what our intent is. I'll give uh, uh, the stick back to Lawrence now for saying a bit more on uh, how to join this initiative. Lawrence. Yeah, thanks, Rick. And there you have it, the world premiere sneak preview of the uh, DevOps Fundamentals courseware and course setup. I think I'm really excited about this product. I mean, I sat in one of the development uh, sessions with you, Rick, and a lot of other people, and I'm, you know, by far an expert in IT, uh, but I was so excited about this whole DevOps uh, topic and where it's going in IT, where it's changing. So I think it's, it's, I mean, even my mom would think this is a great course, I think, to be honest. But, uh, okay, I think a lot of partners are sitting in here and they're asking themselves, okay, this is all nice, but how can we start offering this question, uh, this program to the market? So let's quickly, regarding the time, uh, walk you through the ecosystem uh, for DASA course and exam delivery. Right here, you see a visual which um, explains the model of uh, delivery. So on the left, uh, you should read from left to right. On the left side, there's DASA. DASA develops all the assets. So the syllabi, the exams, um, the white papers, the, the competency framework. But in this case, if we just talk about training, uh, they resell the vouchers through courseware partners to training partners. So there's two types of partnerships, courseware partners and training partners. One is responsible for developing the courseware, the other for delivery of the training. Um, good side of the story is you can also be both. So if you're a training company right now or a consulting company and you think, hey, we can also develop our own courseware, it's perfectly possible. Alternative would be to purchase the uh, courseware and exam vouchers through a courseware partner. ITpreneurs obviously is a courseware partner. So I'm uh, uh, just to make sure. Uh, the exam vouchers, they can be used with multiple exam service providers. So it's a little bit different from your typical delivery model where uh, a training company would have a direct purchase relationship with an exam provider. Uh, in this case, you buy a voucher from DASA through the courseware partner, and you can actually choose where you want to uh, where you want to use the voucher. So, if you have an ex a standing relationship with one of your preferred suppliers, um, uh, exam uh, service providers, then uh, then you can probably still just work in a similar fashion without actually doing all the hassle of negotiating pricing and and whatnot. 
Currently, uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, we have two exam service providers already signed up. Uh, one is APMG, and the other one is ISQI, ISKI. So those are the first two that we are signing the agreement with, uh, with DASA to deliver worldwide services for examinations. Uh, more to follow in the near future. I'm going a little bit quick, more quickly in depth about the courseware partner and the uh, training delivery partner. So the courseware partner, um, the model is really simple. So you develop courseware according to the syllabi. DASA appoints a reviewer who will review the courseware that you send in uh, together with the application form according to the uh, um, the learning objectives mentioned in the syllabi and uh, and gives you a report uh, and and gives you a green light or not and the annual fee will be five thousand us dollars for one course and you can resell to any of the training providers a training provider uh, is really uh, just providing the courseware that they purchase from a courseware provider and um, they have trainers instructors that are not really accredited but they should be uh, adhering to the uh, to regulations that DASA said. So they have to be certified in the courses that they deliver and they have to have some sort of trainer or instructor certification from an existing body. Uh, or if they are already accredited with one of the examination institutes, for instance, the, the familiar ones, so APMG or XN or PeopleCert or whatnot, uh, that also uh, counts for uh, a credible instructor certification uh, credential. So, so in that sense, we're relying also a little bit on the on the ratings, you know, by the users of the instructors. I mean, certification is important and um, and also experience. But in the end, it all comes down to the experience in the classroom, right? So, if if an instructor is, has all the things and they still instructs poorly, uh, then I don't think there will be much follow up business. So, so in that sense, it's a, a slightly different model. Uh, there's an annual fee of fifty dollars attached to becoming a training partner. And I think in this model, it's fairly similar to the affiliate um, uh, model that is, using, is being used by Axelos currently. A poll. Just real quick to check your appetite for training in DevOps fundamentals and, and the advanced levels. So we would like to see um, if you're interested in adding the DevOps fundamentals course that we just recently launched uh, to your portfolio. So please uh, let us know. People are still voting. It's interesting to see we can have more people voting. Yeah, 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 they're waking up. Okay. Okay, let's share the results. This is nice. So a lot of you people are apparently are very interested in adding this to the portfolio and, um, and that's great. So we will follow up on that uh, immediately uh, with more information. Absolutely. Uh, how you can start and we have a lot of uh, guidance documentation and marketing collaterals that you can actually use out of the box so you don't really need to uh, invent the wheel reinvent the wheel uh, and write your own web copy and promotional text and emails and everything so we can help you with that um oh yeah how you can become a partner uh it's really simple just download the application form from the website um devopsagileskills.org or the entrepreneurs um, uh, partner team, you can also request it from them and send it back and that's it. So it's fairly simple. I uh, wanted to show you some preliminary timelines for now regarding the asset development. So right now we are in May, we have just launched the fundamentals version one uh, courseware. Uh, the exam is still under development. Um, I'm expecting to be uh, that the pilot examination will be ready uh, for the trainer trainer instructor candidates um, in the next couple of weeks. So in the next two, three weeks, uh, we're going to be piloting the examinations and we are welcoming all instructors to provide feedback on that. Uh, then we'll quickly go into iteration cycles for updating the fundamentals courseware and exam into a V1.1, 1.2 and a 2.0. And then we're expecting the practitioner also to be ready uh, this summer. So this is the preliminary timeline that I foresee. Um, of course, there are also some trainer trainers, like I just mentioned. I think, Arlie, you have something to say about this. 
Yes, exactly. So uh, I mentioned at the beginning that uh, we will be conducting some uh, trend, trend of sessions. So these are two hours online sessions where uh, our master trainers will uh, walk you through the training materials. So uh, you can uh, uh, register your uh, instructors or, or sign up yourself if you are an instructor. And um, the links uh, here will uh, lead you to the website where you can choose uh, the date and time that uh, you uh, would like to uh, to to attend. Um, so uh, yeah, so part of these uh, uh, early adopter TTT webinars, you will uh, receive a, a free iVitro trainer exam and also instructor package uh, to help you prepare the exam when uh, it's uh, launched. Excellent. Um, like we said, we have the DevOps fundamentals course we're ready for use right now. So if you're interested to uh, uh, to try it out, to see a sample, or to even sell and promote it, just contact our sales teams and we'll follow up immediately. And uh, there's a white paper for free and the next one coming up soon about the competency framework. So, you know, uh, stay online, stay tuned. Exactly. And we'll provide you with a link uh, in the follow-up email together with the recording of this webinar. So you have, uh, you have it uh, with you as well. Excellent. Questions? All right. Thank you, Lawrence and Rick. So uh, if you have questions, uh, here is the time to, uh, to ask. So you can post them in the question box. So uh, let's see what are the questions coming in. All right. So um, I see a first question uh, probably for, uh, um, for Lawrence. Oh, for Rick, for Rick, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Um, can uh, can we run the training in two days instead of three days for the DevOps fundamentals? Um, I wouldn't advise it. Of course, uh, depending on the the classroom and the the prior knowledge of people, uh, the course book provides quite an extensive uh, walkthrough to all the all the materials. So an ex experienced trainer can find all kinds of variations to walk through the materials but to really be um, certain that after two and a half day of training you have had plenty of uh, guidance for doing the exam during during the, the course I would say uh, it is intended for as a three-day format but nothing is uh, put, put in concrete there of course uh, uh, we also get requests from uh, from Europe for for variations on this topic, and some people care less about the certification than others. Uh, some people would like more um, practice exams during the course. Others say we will self study and go to an exam institute uh, a few weeks later. So that that can help to uh, to make variations. So it is possible, but looking at uh, the, the amount of topics we try to cover, it's intended as a three day course. Yes. Okay, thank you, Rick. Um, I see a question, uh, how can we sign up for the TTT? Um, so, um, when I, I'll send you the PDF slides and then you will see the links. So the links will uh, lead you to the website and uh, you will have a TTT calendar. So you just pick and choose the, the time that you want. You will have to fill out a form and uh, after you fill out the form to sign up for the for the actual TTT event, you will have a uh, thank you email that would show up saying that we have uh, uh, registered your your request. And um, uh, if you are already a partner, you will directly receive the uh, logins for the go-to webinar to attend the TTT. And if you're not uh, a partner of Atipreneurs, our um, um, uh, development team, partner development team, will contact you to get the information that they need to uh, uh, make you a partner so you can attend the TTT. Um, if you have any questions, you can email our uh, uh, partner team at partner at atipreneurs.com and uh, they will answer the questions that you have regarding the uh, TTT process. Uh, uh, if, uh, if you do have questions. All right. Um, so I have another question uh, for uh, Lawrence. Uh, can the course be delivered in a virtual format? Um, yes, most certainly, yes. So um, typically all the courses that we can, uh, all the courseware that we provide for classroom delivery can also be provided uh, for virtual classroom delivery. 
we do that a lot. There's a lot of partners who are actually uh, doing virtual deliveries all over the world uh, with our courseware, and this is uh, exactly the same. Um, okay, that's good. Uh, another question, um, will Atipanos include the fundamentals course in the partner course calendar? Uh, interesting question. Um, right now, we don't have that planned yet. It could be an option in some regions. Um, it, it is something to look at. Um, we haven't decided on that yet. Uh, so right now, we haven't planned anything. But if there is an interest, please uh, let us know if there's an interest from your side. Okay, um, that's good to know. Um, so uh, I think it's more a, quest a question for you, Rick. So uh, DevOps seems to be very uh, 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 popular at the moment. Everyone is talking about DevOps. Um, can you share your views on uh, how popular is DevOps really uh, worldwide? I think... Uh... It, it has been popular for, for, for almost a decade, I think, in, in quite some, uh, especially software development uh, environments. But also because it was in a much, uh, much smaller scope and definition. And what I said uh, shortly in, uh, in the beginning of my part of the, of the webinar, I think that we're at the same time uh, at, the, at the beginning of a much larger DevOps movement, simply because uh, the, the principles it, it, uh, it states and it lives by really work well for organizations who would like to transform their, themselves into much more dynamic and high-performance organizations. So it's not so much a typical trick or, or uh, standard or framework, but a way of working, uh, an engineering culture that you embed in your organization. Or sim simply put, many organizations are almost literally building their version 2.0 next to each other. Uh, so in the building, uh, some energy firm I was last week, is uh, in, uh, one of the largest in the Netherlands, is basically uh, starting over. So building a version 2 of its, uh, in the whole company, uh, with some talented people, with full autonomy, uh, with all the basically DevOps principles there, building great products uh, and organizing themselves in a totally new way. And this is the only way to basically uh, uh, come up with new products and services that that uh, consumers and, and their third parties uh, would like to see. And this is an interesting movement. And I think we will see that accelerating in all industries. Uh, maybe many people will not uh, typically think of DevOps as the first thing to, uh, to frame it under as an umbrella term. But if you would do this, and this is what DASA intends, then uh, DASA is, is, is already hugely popular. But uh, we do need some evangelism here and, and your help from the community to, to spread the message and to, to build uh, the best practices and, uh, in the right way and learn from all the, all the experiences we have. Okay, and um, thank you. And then we have another question from a partner. Um, we are looking at adding DevOps into our portfolio. Um, can you uh, give us some uh, uh, advice on how to promote and to position DevOps in relation to uh, other uh, uh, frameworks uh, like uh, Lean and Kaizen and, and Scrum? Yes, I can. It's a, it's a good question. It's, uh, it's, it's really not uh, completely new if you look at the topics. It's heavily inspired by uh, IT service management, Agile and Lean. Uh, as an umbrella, which I mentioned. So it, in terms of positioning, depends a little bit on the state of maturity an organization is in. Many many firms have invested in some lean initiatives already or some agile initiatives, uh, and they have experience with IT service management uh, best practices. Um, it doesn't really matter from which angle you, you start with DevOps, but it would be an, an upgrade to uh, to bring it all together, basically. So my advice would be not to put it in your portfolio as a separate track or separate product or, or philosophy, but as a, a blend uh, and an, an integral vision for high performance IT organizations, which is uh, nicely building on top of the ingredients of those uh, frameworks that you mentioned and not, not uh, to, to live next, next to it in, in parallel. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. So I think we are reaching the hour now. Um, so if you have more questions um, that come to your mind uh, later, or if you want to contact us separately, you can find our email addresses here. Um, and also um, you can follow us on social media for more news and upcoming events uh, and also uh, engage with us. We are always uh, happy to uh, engage with our partners there. Uh, and uh, you can also find here the link, the, um, the, the DASA website where you can find more information, uh, like uh, Rick mentioned, the, the syllabus is there and uh, uh, more information on, the, on, uh, on what is DASA and uh, how you can uh, uh, be a part of it as well. All right, so once again, thank you everyone for joining us today. And uh, thank you, Lawrence. Thank Thanks you, Rick. <laughs> yeah, uh, very good delivery. And uh, so the, the, the recording will be sent to you by email uh, later this week. So uh, please uh, just uh, keep an eye on your mailbox. <laughs> and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to, the, to us for uh, more questions. Uh, at the end of the webinar, you will have a quick survey. Uh, yeah, you can feel free to uh, fill it out if you want to be contacted by our sales team to uh, help you understand uh, how you can uh, get started with DAZA. Uh, we will uh, make sure that uh, you will get uh, uh, answers to your questions. All right, so uh, with that, I would like to wish you a very good day and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, speak to you soon. Bye.